Hi guys, it's Dr. Elawad from stepandrun.com. I'm going to be releasing a series of video lectures um, intended to help you with your with your basic sciences, uh, especially if you're looking to do your step one or any other sort of medical exams where you're going to need knowledge in your basic sciences. Uh, what I found from personal experience is that in med school we we skipped a lot of topics. We went through it kind of quickly, and the, and there was a lot of subjects that um, a lot of people really struggle to get a good grasp on. So when you come to do exams like step one, you need to know this stuff in a lot of detail, and it's it, it can be quite overwhelming. But hopefully, I'm gonna uh, overview a lot of these topics and go through the subjects and try to help you guys out. So if you have any additions or you'd like to see any topics in particular, leave a comment below in the section and let me know what you think of the video. Alright, so we're going to start off with immunology. The reason I decided to start off with immunology is because I find that a lot of people um, find it a difficult subject. It's, it's, it is a tricky area, but I think people tend to overcomplicate it and really just base their understanding more on memorization rather than really getting a good grasp and understanding the concepts and um, really getting a good understanding of the subject as a whole so as a result they find it tricky and they complain about it so we're gonna go over immunology and today I'm gonna start off with an overview are uh, having a look at the innate and adaptive system and how they play a role in helping to understand um, the immune system. Okay, so the immune system. Well, what is the immune system? Well, it's our body's first line defense against foreign antigens. For example, viruses, bacteria, parasites, etc. Anything that's showing um, foreign antigens and anything that we, we really don't want in our body. We have a defense system to protect us and that is our immune system. So what happens when these foreign antigens enter the body? Well the immune system produces a coordinated response in defense and it's usually divided into, into two arms. The immune system is said to have two arms and that's the innate arm and the adaptive arm. And we'll have a look at how um, these two arms work together and bear in mind even though they are they are separated into two distinct entities that they complement each other and they work together having many interactions that allow our immune system to work as effectively as possible to protect us. So the first one we'll be having a look at will be the innate system. So what is the innate system? Well the innate system provides the body's early line of defense against microbes and foreign antigens. It's comprised of four different types of defensive barriers. The first barrier that we'll look at is the physical defense barrier and as you might assume this is um, as the name states it's physical defense barrier stuff such as your skin, your mucous membranes, um, tears that are produced by your eyes uh, etc. It's basically s stopping things from entering or foreign antigens from entering the body into the first place. Now the interesting thing about the skin is that it, is a, it forms a very effective defensive barrier because very few organisms can actually penetrate intact skin. Now a common one that you might be thinking of um, is syphilis and that's why they say it's important not to touch the rash because it actually can penetrate intact skin. There's also parasites and leptospirosis from the urine of animals and um, to name a few that can actually penetrate intact skin. But we'll have a, we'll have a look at those in more depth and detail when we get to those. Um, hopefully in the microbiology section we'll be talking about those in further detail and how they're able to penetrate um, intact skin and some of, their, some of their functions as well. So the next barrier that we have is a physiological barrier. Now what I mean by the physiological barrier is if they're f if foreign antigens enter the body or virus enters the body say for example um, you catch the flu you get a fever a rise in temperature now the interesting thing is about this rise in temperature is it actually provides um, a protective defensive mechanism basically because these viruses or these bacteria that enter the body can only function at a certain temperature so when your temperature rises it actually 
um, becomes a more hostile environment. It actually kills some of these bacteria and viruses just by the rise in temperature. So it's one of our defense mechanisms. So another one of your physiological defensive barriers will be pH. For example, your stomach acid. It's a very powerful acid and it provides a very hostile environment where bacteria and viruses struggle to survive in. Apart from one particular bacteria that you're probably all thinking of by now, and that's H. pylori. But we'll come to discuss later on why it's able to survive there and why it actually likes to survive in the stomach. Then you have complements also considered part of the physiological innate system. The reason being is that it's not specific for foreign antigens. But this is, um, if we're speaking strictly, it would actually be the classical pathway of complement that's considered to be 100% part of the innate system for the reason that it's activated by the antigen antibody complex whereas the alternate pathway is activated um, by antigens and then you have the leptin pathway which activated or the lectin pathway which is activated by mannose or other sugars on the microbe surface then you have enzymes for example lysozyme which um, basically digests peptidoglycan bonds within bacteria and you have stuff like interferon alpha and beta which are also characterized which are also considered part of the innate system then you have your cellular components such as neutrophils macrophages um, phagocytic sorts of um, cells that are present in our immune system and the reason that they're considered part of the innate system is they're not specific for certain antigens. For example, they react one and the same to all foreign antigens. Okay? And then we also have some interesting ones such as dendritic cells and natural killer cells which their function is to present antigens to other cells so that you can um, form specific antibodies. Uh, but we'll talk more about this in detail later and why uh, why its its function is as such and how they, they process these antigens to help the adaptive immune response and how it all ties in together. So at the moment it might all seem a little bit confusing, there's things here and there, but we'll break down each one of these cells and discuss where they're formed, what their function is, and it'll all start to become more clear and form a clearer picture so that you can understand it better. But for now, just bear in mind that these cells have pathogen recognition receptors, also known as PRRs, which recognize cells bearing foreign antigens and pathogen-associated molecular patterns, PAMPs, which are shared in common between wide varieties of pathogens. Okay, so in response to these um, PAMPs being detected, you get phagocytosis. All right. We'll discuss this more further along the line and we'll break it down to make it easier to understand. And then you have inflammatory events. Well, inflammation in itself is started by the release of chemical mediators by cells that have um, their pathogen recognition receptors triggered as well as injured cells and you get all these inflammatory chemical mediators being released. And this inflammation allows for the creation of a site in which the infection may be contained, preventing further dissemination of the microbe, as well as um, all the chemicals, the mediators that are being released, which cause vasodilation, and they also act as a chemoattractant for macrophages and neutrophils, and you get all these other immune um, immune cells coming to the site, okay? As well as a local temperature rise, again, the temperature rising interferes with foreign cells. Okay, So what are some of the functions or features of the innate system that make it unique and different from the adaptive system? Well, it's present, intrinsically present, which means it's present with or without previous stimulation. For example, you've had your skin since birth, your stomach acids have always been there, Lysozymes are always constantly being produced. Your tears are there. For ex so it, it, it's pretty much saying that 
you don't need stimulation from foreign antigens to form these defenses. They're already there. Next is that the innate system is non-specific. So it acts on shared structures of microbes, like I was saying, phagocytosis of an antigen that a neutrophil or a macrophage or phagocytic cell might recognize as foreign, or such as lysozymes that break peptidoglycan bonds bonds that are shared amongst bacteria. So when you say it's non-specific, it's attacking these shared structures that are shared between various groups of microbes. Also has no memory, so um, subsequent infections are not enhanced in activity. So you can be exposed to the same antigen a thousand times, and the first time you're exposed to it, the reaction will be the same by the thousandth time that you're exposed to it. There's no memory. And there's also um, a limited diversity, so there's very, f very, um, it's not as diverse as, as the adaptive system, as we'll come to see. Uh, it doesn't quite have as many features as the adaptive system. So once an innate immune system, so once the innate immune response is defeated, this causes the adaptive immune system to be activated in an antigen specific response. So lymphocytes produce the antibodies which are tailored to a specific cell, to a specific antigen. And later we'll talk in detail about how this actually happens and the benefit of this and how it's um, effective and how the innate system basically triggers this formation and it helps the adaptive system to form these antibodies which are specific for an antigen. Okay, so we'll have a look at the adaptive system. So what are some of the components of the adaptive system? Well, chiefly you have lymphocytes, which are your T cells, cytotoxic cells, helper cells, all T cells, and then you have your B cells, B lymphocytes, and your plasma cells. And remember, plasma cells are just um, differentiated B lymphocytes, differentiated B cells. And we'll talk about this further along the line when we talk about B cells specifically. Then you also have antigen presenting cells, B cells, macrophages and dendritic cells. Now the interesting thing about these macrophages and dendritic cells is even though they're considered part of the innate system, which strictly they are, but they also have an added function in which, that, in which they ingest the foreign antigen and then present the antigen so that T cells and B cells can produce a specific tailored response to that foreign antigen. Now we'll talk about this further along the line. We'll discuss macrophages in details, dendritic cells, and how they present these antigens and the following response. So this is one of those areas where the macro where um the innate immune response is working together with the adaptive response and we'll see we'll see how that ties in together and in detail how it works together so what are some of the features of the adaptive immune system well it's inducible so it's switched on when it's required it becomes activated when we need it it's also specific so it has a very specific response for very particular antigens it also has memory so the first time that it's exposed to an antigen, it'll respond on a subsequent infection much more effectively. It'll recognize the antigen and, and it will be able to, to, to deal with it much more effectively because it has memory. It's also very highly diverse. also has host versus non-host cell recognition. And when this, when this fails here, you get your autoimmune diseases such as SLE, um, etc, etc. It's also self-limiting. So it returns to a basal state after an infection has been defeated or a pathogen has been destroyed. Okay, so comparing some of um, the innate system versus the adaptive system characteristics. So as we said, specificity. The innate system is specific for well, it's not specific, but it acts on shared structures between a variety of microbes, whereas the adaptive system is specific for specific antigens. 
innate doesn't have any memory, whereas adaptive does have memory. Innate also has a limited diversity, whereas adaptive has a very extensive diversity. And then some of the components. So you have your physical components, which are your skin, mucous membranes, lysozymes, interferon alpha, beta, temperature, and pH. And remember, the key thing is that they're not specific here. Then in adaptive, you have your lymph nodes, spleen, um, mucous-associated lymphoid tissue, thymus gland. And you'll see how these produce a specific response. For example, in your thymus, maturation of um, the T cells which are part of your uh, which are part of your adaptive immune response but we'll have a look at that across the line in further detail in depth when we get to that then you have your blood proteins you have complement non-specific antibodies specific so the interesting thing is these two tie together very closely because the antibodies activate complement and antibodies and complement together enhance phagocytosis by uh, macrophages and neutrophils and um, we'll, all, we'll, we'll get to that and we'll see how it all ties together in detail. So then you have your cellular components which in the innate system is composed of phagocytes and natural killer cells. And in the adaptive system cellular components are composed of lymphocytes except natural killer cells and we'll talk about natural killer cells later on but the interesting thing is about natural killer cells even though they are formed from the lymphocyte progenitor they're not specific for antigens or specific sorts of antigens that's why they're considered not to be part of the adaptive system but rather part of the innate system because of the fact that they're not specific. So we've compared the innate versus the adaptive system but now let's have a look at how the innate and adaptive system work together because I said they work closely together and they interact with each other with antibodies and cytokines and complement. So let's have a look at some of these interactions and we can start to have a general overview of how they interact together. So you get a foreign antigen that might enter the body. Neutrophils and macrophages recognize foreign antigen. They release cytokines. These cytokines, which are cytokines, are basically a messaging system between different types of immune cells. We'll also, have a look at that in further detail later. And these cytokines will go and stimulate T cells. These T cells will also release cytokines of their own and these cytokines will go and stimulate B cells. These B cells will release antibodies. Now this antibodies will go and form an antibody antigen complex with the foreign antigen because remember these antibodies are being formed by B cells which are specific for an antigen so this antibody will be specific for an antigen will go form an antibody antigen complex. This will cause opsonization or make it more easy for phagocytosis to occur. So phagocytes will come and attach the antibody antigen complex and it will enhance phagocytosis and complement will also trigger will also be triggered by the antibody antigen complex. So it all ties together very closely and there's a lot of different features that overlap between the innate and the adaptive system even though it can be tricky to get your head around um, just persevere it will start to make more sense as you really look at things on a basic level and you just try and have um, a decent understanding you will grasp it and it will become a lot easier to understand immunology you just got to keep working at it and it will fall together the pieces will fall together and it, it, it will hopefully get easier and easier to understand so stay tuned and we'll be releasing a next video, hopefully as soon as possible.